about to help me and we're going to get going. Father, I just want to thank you tonight, Father, in the name of Jesus. I want to thank you for your mighty power and your grace. Father, we thank you that we, your church, have grown to expect the supernatural. And there are not many places that you can go to where you can believe God for the supernatural. And so, Father, tonight, let your supernatural power be manifest in this place. For anyone believing, Lord, and Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that when we gather, it will not be people who are custom or used to something, but let each person press for the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ. So I pray there will be a press right now, Father, in the Spirit. And so we yield to you. Our love is shining all the way to you. So come, Holy Spirit, come. Us, minister to us. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you, Father, in Jesus' name. Hey, come on, give Jesus a hand of praise. Man. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, I don't know about you, but I can sort of sense in my spirit what I think God is doing this year. And you really want to be positioned because you want to be in season. How are you guys going? You're all in a forever operation there? Um, yeah, yeah. The in eternal mood there. Um, just tell your neighbor, God wants to turn your captivity. Just tell him that. Tell him God wants to turn your captivity. You know, and I want him, it's so important to have the right mindset. You know, because we meet a lot of different people um, from just talking to a lot of people. And sometimes it's the way they see is the problem. And sometimes we are limited by sight. And sometimes we have a way we look at things. You know, we all have a way we look at things. And so sometimes it's not the circumstances, but it's the way we look. And so we have to ask God to help us. Because Jesus announced his ministry by saying he had come to give sight to the blind. And we know Jesus was not speaking about physical blindness. Because he also said he's come that those that see might be blind. And Jesus never made anyone blind. So we understand he's not talking about that. We understand he's talking about opening our eyes that we might see. What do you say that with me? Lord, open my eyes. Amen. Now, so the song people, y'all are not seeing your hands moving or anything like that. But y'all ought to be working on me there. Yeah, yeah? Because it's, it's, it's off. The song is off. Yeah, yeah? Now, so as we get into the message today, I pray God will do that for you. Help you see. Yeah, yeah? So, um... I want to start off with Psalm 126, verse 1. I'll take it in the King James Version. Psalm 126, verse 1 in the King James Version. Good night to everyone. If you're watching the live stream, good night to you. Psalm 126, verse 1 in the King James Version. Um, let me let them... Hey, just pray with me in the Spirit just for a while. Yeah? Just pray in the Spirit just for a while. Sontianda ba soto shata dreng kiriyama tu mundo soto... Dre peti bata ma toko to sika. Dre te mende de bosso to shata. Dre in kabasu to ni kare mande de koso ti meshe. Dre in bata bata ba kusoko. Have your way, O God. Dre in bata bo she. Uka sika nde kata ma ku. Dre peti mosoto. We invite the angels of God of all types of diversity, O God, to fill this place right now, Father. Dre bata ma shakata. Father, we invite your mighty power, Lord. Let everything be possible in this place tonight, O oh God. Father, rewrite, Father, the, rewrite the course of some of our lives here today, O oh God. Help us, O oh God. Anyone who's stuck, Father, take them out, O oh God. Help us see, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, come on, give Jesus a hand of praise. Alleluia. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I want you to throw up, you have to work on my song, right? I want you to throw up 126 verse 1, King James Version. I hear what the Bible says. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. Just tell your neighbor, God wants to turn your captivity. 
What about telling them that I live faith? What about telling them that I live faith? I ain't feel it. I ain't, I'm not feeling all here. I'm not feeling all here. I don't want to pray in tongues again. I'm not feeling all here. I had to go back in tongues. Just tell anybody God wants to turn your captivity. Whatever has held your life in bondage, whatever has held you captive, Whatever, any time you try to go forward, it gripped you and said, where are you going? Whatever limitation in your life, whatever's holding you back, God wants to turn it. So whatever is holding your life in bondage, if it is sickness, if it is money, if it is lack, whatever it is, God wants to turn it. And so the Bible says, when the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, we were like those that dream." And so when your captivities turn, you would be like them that dream. You'll have your dreams again. Help me with the song system now, guys. Only want my holy mic or something. Help me out now. So when the captivities turn, you would be like them that dream. Just tell your neighbor, God wants to restore your dreams. Now, 2019 is the year for dreams. Just be honest with me. How many of y'all have stopped dreaming? How many of y'all have stopped dreaming? How many of y'all are sleeping but not dreaming? You know, some people like to sleep. Yeah? Some people believe their calling is to sleep. You know, the wise man in the Bible says, Do not give sleep to thine eyes. If you love sleep, there's too much stuff to do. You cannot be sleeping at 9 o'clock. Unless you're working shift. Just tell anybody you can't be sleeping at 9 o'clock. Yeah. Come on. If you're sleeping at 9 o'clock here, come for prayer. Tell anybody you have too much to do. Tell them you have too much to do. In fact, this might sound strange. Because people think when you sleep, you dream. But dreamers have a problem sleeping at times. Sometimes people who have a dream, the dream will keep them up in the night. They're excited about something. I could preach this with my voice today. I forget. I'm bothering with them. Yeah? If we stream in, once it's coming good on the stream, you're a little bother. I don't want to fret all you. Listen. God ever give you anything? That you could not sleep in the night? Anybody that ever happened to them? Yeah. I'm not talking about Tabanka. God did not give you that. <laughs> I'm saying, did God ever give you an idea? When last you had an idea that kept you awake? Can I see a show of hands? When last you had an idea that kept you awake? And who had an idea in the last year that kept you awake? Can I see a hand? One, two, three, four. My God, my God, we all are very good sleepers. You know, many times in the night after say, Lord, not tonight, not tonight. After try to not, you know, because it'll be too, I, I wouldn't sleep. I'll have to say, hold up, Lord, hold up. And so the Bible says, when the Lord turned the captivity, we were like them that dream. And so there are a lot of people going through the earth that they aren't dreaming. They are going to work. They are coming home. They want to fall in love. They want to get married. They want to have a house. They want to have a car. But God has made you for bigger things than that. God has made you for more powerful things than that. You are called to fulfill destiny. Your destiny is bigger than a woman. Your destiny is bigger than a man. You have a purpose over your life. You have a promise over your life. God has a plan for your life. And so God wants you to get that. Now, given this verse in the Bible, let me, let me help you. Give me Ephesians chapter 4, verse 8, King James Version. Ephesians 4, verse 8, King James Version. Throw that up for me. Ephesians 4, verse 8. Watch this now. Watch this. Wherefore, when Jesus ascended on high, he led captive captivity. 
Just telling you about God. He led captivity captive. Same thing. Some people don't like it that way. Let me say it the next way. He led captive captivity and he led captivity captive. Same thing. Yeah. Just tell your neighbor, God wants to turn your captivity. Yeah, just tell him. Tell him with a little faith. All right, let me help all you out a little bit. Let's pray in the spirit for 10 seconds. Come on, I had to help all you tonight. So daddy yamba shato. Father, help the song people tonight, oh God. Vrembete mo sata monda bota. Vrike basuta mande bosho. Anoint them, Lord. Give them wisdom and anoint them, Father. In Jesus' name. Now watch this. The Lord wants to turn the thing that has you captive in your life. Can I help you? What do you need to fulfill your dream? Can I ask you a question? A show of hands. How many of you all here, if you had $5 million, you wouldn't be doing what you're doing right now as a job? Can I see a hand? Be honest. If you had $5 million, you fired the work. Let me see your hands. Yeah. Wow, wow, wow. What do you say with me? What do you say with me? My dream is my business. Yeah. Yeah. God, God doesn't. So what are you doing right now? You're being tortured. Yeah. You're being tortured on the job. Right? The reason why you are working, you are working for money. That's what you're doing. Yes? That's what you're doing. But God says that the field that he has for you will provide for you. I want to I wanna stop right there. Just watch somebody in the eye. Just make contact. Make a little human contact with me. Make a friend. Make a friend. And tell them, breads. Tell them, breads. You have a destiny. There is a plan that God has for your life before you were even born. You were made for that plan. No one can do it better than you. You're not in competition with anyone. When you plant a mango seed, it's genetically designed to produce a tree that will bring forth mangoes. You don't need anything from anyone. It's inside of you by God. You're genetically designed to succeed at your purpose. But what has come is outside influences and the words and the thoughts and the world, the society, the world system has come at you to limit you, to hinder you, to make you believe that you can't fulfill your dream. But God wants you to fulfill your dream. And so the Bible says, Jesus gave what? He gave what? He gave what? Gifts. Gifts. When he ascended on high, he led captivity what? Captive. And he gave gifts. Kyle, is there any way you can help them in that boot fix this mic for me? You know? When he led captivity captive, he gave them gifts. And so let me tell you something. When that thing that has been holding your life in bondage, when that is broken, you will begin to function in your gift. There is a gift that God has for you. The Bible says, a man's gift makes a way for him and brings him before great men. Every one of us have a, have a gift. Every one of us has a gift. The devil does not want you to know who you are he does not want you to discover your gift. The devil, if he can have his way, you would live your whole life never knowing who you are. If the devil has his way, you would live your whole life never fulfilling your destiny. You'll never use your gift. So God wants you to know you have a gift. Your gift is where you must work. Yeah? Your gift is where you must work. It doesn't make sense to work somewhere. Let me tell you something. If you use anything for a purpose outside of its design, it's going to be misused and abused. And so some of us are misusing our lives. And God wants us to begin to function according to his purpose. So what he said that with me, the Lord will turn my captivity. 
Say to me, everything that is holding me back, chaining me up, limiting me, God will turn it and I will discover my gift in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, give Jesus a hand of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, drop this verse for me. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 7, chapter 28, verse 7. I'll take it in the NIV version. Deuteronomy 28, verse 7. I'll take it in the NIV version. Now, hear what the Bible says. NIV version, Deuteronomy 28, verse 7. Throw that up for me. Now, watch this. The Lord will grant that the enemies that rise up against you will be defeated before you. So you'll see it. Not just defeated. They will be defeated before you. Would you say that with me? In the name of Jesus Christ. Any enemy that rises up against me, it is not of the Lord. They shall be defeated in Jesus' name. Now that has nothing to do with blessing or cursing the enemy. If you come in to rob me, I want you to be what? Defeated. If you're in work trying to bad talk me so I could lose my job, I want you to be what? Defeated. I'm not cursing you. I'm blessing you. But I don't want you to harm me. You see, I don't want you to damage me. So what do you say that with faith? The Lord will grant that every enemy that rise up against me will be defeated in the name of Jesus. Now just tell anybody, but don't rise up against me. Yeah. Yeah. Don't rise up. I don't want that for you. I don't want you to be defeated. I, I, I do not want you to go through that. And so sometimes when people come against you, sometimes when people attack you, sometimes when people fight in you, you have to say to them, um, please, please, for your sake, easy, easy, easy. easy. You're going to hurt yourself, my friend. You're going to hurt yourself. I'm, I just, I just talk into you. You know what I mean? So here what the Bible says. And they will come at you in one direction. And they will flee what? Seven. seven directions. So some people think they only have north, east, and west. There are seven directions, right? There's not just one direction, north, east, and west. So they will flee in ways that you didn't even know somebody could flee from. So nobody in your work. What he said out to me, nobody in my work. Nobody in my job. See, no one could come against you and hinder the purpose and the plan of God in your life. And now look at the next verse. Watch the next verse. Watch the next verse. And thou will send a blessing. The Lord will send a blessing on your bands. What do you say that? There will be a blessing on my bands. Yeah, yeah. That's like your house and your bank account and everything that he used to store and hold inventory. The Lord will send a blessing on your bands. And everything you put your hand to, the Lord will bless it. And the Lord will bless you in the land he's given you. I did not understand that. I really didn't understand it. Because I've done some things that have been blessed. And I did some things that didn't work. Anybody did some things that didn't work? Yeah. yeah. And so when I did something that did not work, I said, Lord, I thought whatever I put my hands to do, it would be blessed. How come I did this and it didn't work? And the Lord told me, I caused all things to work together for good because you love me. And so what I said to myself was, that thing that I did that did not work opened the door to lead me to something else. And I said, that thing that I did that didn't work was my training. I learned something to help me with something else. But I was wrong. What do you say to me? Whatever I put my hands to do, it will prosper. Anything I touch will prosper. I am not King Minus. I'm King Plus. You know, everything I do, God will add to it. And what I'm seeing, what he said with me, the year of the servant. 2019, God said to me, is the year of the servants of God. Yeah? 
2019 is the year of the servants of God. If you couldn't have a child, if you believe in God for a child, you try everything, you couldn't have a child, whatever. Talk to them after church. Yes? Talk to them. You believe in God. You, if you're trying to have a child, you can't have a child. You try everything and you're not married, you're in trouble. Right? But if you're married and you're trying and you can't have a child, talk to them and, and find out what God did. Because they couldn't have a child. They were trying. They tried this. They tried that. And I don't know. I think it was Cindy or somebody prayed. Nikki or who? I don't know who prayed. Who prayed for you? Cindy prayed for her. And God blessed them with a child. And they can come with a child there. So that's a child of promise. Right? Yeah? Every time you're struggling to have a child, it's a child of promise that the enemy wants to keep back. And all of God, the lineage we come from, the child of promise is always a struggle to be born. Abraham struggled to have Isaac. Isaac struggled to have his children. So it's the same kind of thing that goes on. And so God will bless you. With, and it even said that here. He said, I'll bless the fruit of your womb. And so what I realize now, the things that I did... Four years ago, that I thought did not bring forth fruit. Four years later, five years later, I pass and I see a tree grow out. I said, wait, 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 wait. What are you doing, God? It is like this is the year... Of the servants of God. This is the year you cannot lose this year. Listen to me. Yeah, give the song people a little round of applause. You know? It was a hard task, but it, they, they got somewhere. They got somewhere. It was a hard task. You know what I mean? They got somewhere. When you finish your service, please go straight to them at the end of your service and say, Did you all test the mic before? Just ask them for me, right? Just ask them. Right? Now, so watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I, I can feel in my spirit that there are some things you plant will begin to sprout this year. There are some seeds you sowed that's going to begin to grow this year. There are some prayers you prayed that will begin to manifest this year. There are some things you have asked God for and you almost want to give up on God is going to turn the captivity. Yeah? Just tell him, but God is doing something. Just tell him that. God is doing something. Yeah. Let me say that again. Let me say that again. You know, I'm experiencing it, so it's hot for me. But you might not be experiencing it, so you might just be saying words. Let me say it again. There are some things you have prayed that you'll begin to see this year. There are some seeds you plant that will begin to sprout this year. And there are some things you have given up on. There are some dreams you have left aside. All of a sudden, by God's supernatural providence... You will see the hand of God and God will change it around. Amen. So God is working behind the scenes. What do you say that with me? My God is working behind the scenes. So don't give up on your dream. I want to prophesy and declare over you. You would be like them that dream. Once again in your life, you would be like them that dream. It's a prophecy of the movement of the spirit. I'll show you in a little while. It's a prophecy of the movement of the waters of God. I'll pour out my spirit on all flesh. On your sons and your daughters. And they'll begin to see visions. And the old men will begin to dream dreams. Once the Holy Spirit is on you, you are a dreamer. If you sleep in the night and you don't get dreams from God, I'll pr we'll pray tonight and you begin to dream. I was talking to the CEO of a company today and I said to him, I said, listen. I needed a lot of money in 30 days. It was impossible because the money I needed was in the millions. I needed millions in 30 days. It was impossible until God gave me a dream. And when God gave me a dream, he showed me what to do in the spirit and I did it and I got breakthrough. So God will cause you to have a dream inside of you. If you are sitting on here right now and there is not, you're not pregnant with something, 
there isn't something stirring in you. There isn't a dream in you. There isn't a passion in you. You see, it is the purpose of God that keeps us alive. A man with the purpose of God in his life cannot be defeated. You see, the devil must disconnect you from purpose to kill you. You say, how oh, 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 you could say that? There are rules. There are things in place in God's word. There are powerful forces at work. More powerful than the buck down the road. Yeah. More powerful than the short man running through. What, what era Trinidad is that? Gasparillo. Yeah. More powerful than that buck. For the Bible says, for we know, for we know, for we know, for we know that all things work together for good for them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. Yeah? So we know this, that as long as you are called according to the purpose of God and as long as you love God, you cannot be defeated. If they do your bad, it's good. If they do your good, it's good. If they try to defeat you, you'll be blessed. If they curse you, you'll be blessed. If they bless you, you'll be blessed. You cannot stop me. Just tell anybody that. You cannot stop me. You can't stop me. There is nothing you can do. I am dealing with God. I'm dealing with God. There's nothing. You fire me, it's the best day in my life. Fire me. Fire. Go ahead and fire me. Yeah, go ahead and fire me. Go to work tomorrow and watch your boss and say, fire me. Fire me. <laughs> Go to work tomorrow and watch your work. Say, fire me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Some are laughing. But when you're blessed, you're blessed. My brother used to work Texas Metro. I want, his name is Kirby. And the boss said, Kirby, get into my office now. Calling him from ins- outside now. Get into my office now. And so my brother went in the office and he stood up and he watched his boss. He says, sit your ass down. So he tell him, sit your, and he cuss him. Sit your ear, donkey dog. And my brother said, it seems like it's already sitting down. Do you want me to sit down too? Yeah. <laughs> And he and his boss was like that. He boss, his boss laughed and loved him. You have to know how to get along sometimes. You have to know how to work with people sometimes. Because I'm blessed. I don't go anywhere to be blessed. I'm blessed. I'm not trying to be a success. My success, I don't have success goals in my life. These are my success goals. Success for me is not a destination. It's an identity. From the moment you make success a destination, you're doomed for failure. You would live your whole life with a sense of, am I there yet? Am I there yet? Am I there yet? But I know who I am in Christ. I know who I am. I know who I belong to. I am a success. I am a success. From the moment you give your life to Christ, you are a success. And because I am a success, whatever I put my hands to do, it shall prosper. Yeah? Whatever I put my hands to do, it will prosper. And so I'm seeing God, and he's teaching me something. That some seeds spring up one time, and some things your plant will take years. Some seeds take five years to grow. Some take four years to grow. But let me tell you something. Do not abort and uproot anything you have planted. What do you say this to me? I have a green thumb. Whatever I plant grows. Yeah, do not abort with your mouth. You did something, well, that was a waste of time. Oh, we are believers. We don't do waste of time. I don't do that. I don't, sorry, I don't do waste of time. Yeah, everything I do prospers. Everything I do prospers. So listen, I thought I was reading the Bible. The Lord will send a blessing on your bands. And everything you put your hands to do will be... Give me it in the King James Version. How about that? Give me the King James Version. Watch it, watch it. Watch it. 
And the Lord will do what? Oh, oh, oh. The Lord will do what? What do you say that with me? There is a command from the Lord to bless me. The Lord will, when the Lord commands, let me tell you something. The Lord will command a blessing on the places that you store things. What do you say that to me? Every place I store shall be blessed. What are some places you store? To? But listen, my cupboard bless. Because we have so much clothes in there. <laughs> it's blessed till it's a mess. Your fridge will be blessed. You go in some of your fridge and all you have is water. People come home, you don't even have a little juice for them. You don't have a shandy. You don't have, yeah? You have water and bread and cheese. Pop your hand. Yeah? Water, bread, and where Damien? Damien just had bread. You know? You have water, bread, and cheese. And when people come, you can't offer them anything. Every place that you store. You see, sometimes you can't believe for something you don't know is yours. I buy a lot of clothes when I go away. I go away. When I first started, I uh, first came to the Lord, I was wearing Elite. Anybody remember Elite? Yeah? Yeah? You just try to iron it and then mash up. <laughs> right? And then after I went to America, and when I went to America, I upgraded. I upgraded from Elite to Van Heusen. So I was like, I was wearing my Van Heusen. Right? And then after a little while, I upgraded from Van Heusen to Perry Ellis. And so I had my Perry Ellis clothes. And I would pass by Express clothing. And when I watch Express, I said, whoa, these people know how to express themselves. And I look, and I'd go in. I'd go in. And you know, you're walking like, you, you know? You walk in and say, look at the clothes and stuff. But what you're trying to find is the clearance rack. Say, <laughs> so walk in, you look, you look, you look. Oh, clearance. Let me just take a little look in there. <laughs> and you have three or four items from clearance. And I'll bring, you know what I'm talking about. You feel it. Yeah. And I'll bring them home. And they will disappear in our blessed cupboard. And every now and then, I'll get a little glimpse of a blue shirt I bought some time ago. And I'll say in my mind, didn't I buy, didn't, like for camp, I was saying, Onika told me, put aside anything you want. I said, how will I know what to put aside when I don't even know what's available? Because everything is a mess. You cannot believe for something you don't know is possible. And so because of that, the Bible says, I has not seen, air has not heard, neither has entered to the heart of man all the things that God has prepared for those that love him, but he's revealing it to us by his Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is given to you to know the truth in every circumstance. The Holy Spirit is given to you to lead you into all truth. That you might know the things freely given to you. Why do you say that with me? My storehouses. Every place I store. A blessing is commanded. My wallet. My bank account. My drawer. My cupboard. My fridge. Every place. I store anything in the name of Jesus Christ. I command a blessing in Jesus' name. Come on, give him a hand of praise like you believe it. I receive that. And in all that you set your hand to do, the Lord will bless. So I realize that I have to be careful with my mouth. Because there were some things I used to say to Kyle. I said, Kyle, we did five things, boy. And two of them work. And three of them. How much time I tell you that, Kyle? How much time I tell you? We do five things and three work, two work. And three did not work. But listen. Everything I taught did not work. Four years later. 
it just come together in a kind of way. And I say, oh, uh -huh. so it is God. So I change my thinking. I repent. I repent. I say, may I never speak foolishness again. May I believe in God for every circumstance in my life. Now, come on. Give me this verse in the Bible. Let me hear, help you a little more. Give me Isaiah 41, verse 18. I'll take it in the King James Version. Isaiah 41, verse 18 in the King James Version. What do you say with me? This is the year of God's servants. This is the year of God's servants. So I don't want to deceive you. To make it appear like if the things I say apply to everyone. That would be deception. But what I can tell you, for we know that all things work together for good for those that love God. For those who are called according to his purpose. So if you do not love God, and you're not a call according to his purpose, when bad happens, it might be bad. You see? But once you love God, this is why I say it's a year of the servants. You see, because when you submit to God, there are rules to love. And one of the rules of love is a love that is force ceases to be loved. And so because God loves you, he has to work with you. He can't force his will on you. He knows his capabilities, his ability, his power. He knows his, might, he knows his mighty power. But he has to work with you so that you would be blessed. Because there are some people who resist the blessing of God. They're smarter than God. They're more intelligent. They use their education, their intellect, their carnal reasoning, and they put God in his place. They manners the God of heaven and say, you can't tell me what to do. I know better than you. And those people are taught by life. That's why the Bible says stripes are for the back of a fool. And some people will not learn by love, so they learn by stripes. So here what the Bible says. Throw it up for me. Give me, um, you're giving me Isaiah 41 verse 18. I will open rivers, where? In high places. What did he say to me? In the name of Jesus Christ. High places will be open for me. In the name of Jesus, every high place that God has ordained for rivers to flow, I command rivers to be open in the name of Jesus. So God is going to do something for you in high places. Where kings sit and leaders sit and where principalities and powers sit, you will not only have to wrestle with principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places, but there'll be the flowing and the moving of the Spirit of God in high places. And the Lord says, I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will even make your wilderness a pool of water. And your dry land springs. Rivers, fountains, pools, and springs. Rivers, fountains, pools, and springs. All deal with the Holy Spirit. All deal with the waters of God. This is why Jesus said to the woman by the well, If you knew who it was you were speaking to, you'd ask me and I'll give you water. But the water I give you will spring up inside of you like rivers of living water. And so God says, I will open rivers in high places and the dry land springs of water. Tell anybody you can't be dry. Tell them you can't be dry. Pass our feet in dry now. No, you can't be dry. You cannot be dry. Stop that. Quick, quick, quick. Stop that. Stop that. Stop that. For when a demon comes out of a man, he says to himself, he, when the demon comes out of a man, he goes into what? Dry places. So dry places are the habitation of devils. For where the Holy Spirit is not, or where there is not the rivers of God, you can be in trouble. For where there is not truth, there is a tendency to be lies. And where light is absent, it's an invitation for darkness. And this is why the Bible says, don't be drunk with wine, but be what? Filled. So you must be filled with the waters of God. 
But if you're not filled with the waters of God, you'll get ideas, philosophies, concepts. And you can get filled with demonic power. Let me tell you, when demons grip your mind, you won't understand. You see, when you think it's lust, eyes lust. Hey, look, man, everything out, breast out, skirt up to here. I walk in. Look, man, I cool. Demons grab your mind. A devil grab your mind. What is demons in your mind? Because any sane woman will not walk around with her breasts out. That's sanity. Some of y'all disagree. Yeah. Even KFC knows for breast, leg, and tie, you got to put it in a box. Even KFC understand that. You never go and say, give me a dinner special. And they say, hold your, t- light, hold your leg, hold your tie. And they pull out your hand and get, no, it has to go in a box. Yeah. You, you got it, brother. Even KFC is conservative. Colonel Sanders understands that leg, breast, and tie is for a box. So learn from KFC. They have good marketing, learn. So when a demon gets into, what is a devil? So I know some of all is buck running through. <laughs> they, they're looking for the buck. They're looking for a buck. A buck that can do so, boom and disappear. They're looking for a, a spirit. But listen to this. Listen to this. A demon is going to be like a, a lens over your eyes. And you'll see the world through the devil. Through the spirit of fear, through the spirit of lust. You can't have a relationship with a woman as a friend. You always have to think body parts and <laughs> you're walking around and you, oh, you want to live your life like that low living. Listen, that low, that is low living. That is low living. Live like if you're in heaven. Nobody's operate like that in heaven. Yeah, nothing like that in heaven. So the Bible tells us that God will open up rivers for us. So you are meant to be filled with the Spirit. I understand. I'm not dealing with anybody. Yeah? Remember the woman by the well? Remember the woman by the well? Amen. Jesus said, Jesus said, I'm by the well, so he thirsts there. He walk all day in the, he by the well. The lady come, he say, give me some water. She say, how come you talking to me? You are Jew talking to me as Samaritan? Because Samaritans were mixed. Jew and like a dogla. So she said, she say, how come you talking to me? And Jesus watched and said, if, if you knew who was talking to you, you would ask me for water and I will give you that you'll never thirst again. She said, give me this water. <laughs> and Jesus said to her, before we talk about the water, let's talk about your thirst. He said, call your husband. She said, I don't have a husband. She said, answer right, because he was with five men, and that man you're with now is not your husband. So some people thirst. Some people are thirst. I don't want to watch you too much. <laughs> some people, eyebrows say, me. <laughs> some people are thirst. Last year, they had six boyfriends. Thirst. It always not working out. Like Tarzan. Jumping from vine to vine. You thirst. But when you meet Jesus, he's the ultimate thirst quencher. Amen. When you meet Jesus, it's done. Because you don't need to thirst anymore. Because the rivers in high places, the pools, the springs, the fountains are inside of you. And therefore, you have a joy, a peace. You have, you're fulfilled from inside. And so, therefore, you do not operate in the realm of this world with a dimension of thirst. You operate in the world with love. You see, lust is always taken. But love is always given. Lust has something to give. Lust has something, wants to take something. But love has something to give. So, look at the next verse. Watch it, watch it. Watch the next verse. Watch your next verse. I will plant in the wilderness cedar. Watch out. I'm not pronouncing that word. <laughs> <laughs> I will plant cedar 
the shaitap tree, <laughs> the myrtle, the oil tree. I will set in the desert the fir tree, the pine tree, the box tree together. What do you say with me? I see trees growing everywhere. There was wilderness and desert in my life. Every place in your life where there was a wilderness, I want to prophesy to you in 2019 that it will begin to sprout. Every place in your life where there was a desert, I want to prophesy it will begin to sprout. And in the desert, we don't have time because you, 